So obviously, this jig isn't going to replace your table saw. However, if you have a shop like mine and you don't have a table saw for whatever reason, but you do have a circular saw, then I promise you that this is a jig you're going to want to have lying around your shop. The jig is very simple in design. It has a track that your saw is going to ride on that is affixed at a 90 degree angle to a fence in which you can take your board, mark where you need to cut, slide it in up against the fence, and simply make your cut leaving you a perfect 90 degree cut every time. And if you have the need to make repeatable cuts at a certain width, just simply affix a piece of scrap wood to the fence and you have a stop block that will let you do just that. Plus, by making this jig yourself, you can build it to whatever width or length that you need that's going to best suit the needs you have in your shop. And the best part is, I promise you you can build this within a day or a weekend. The first step is to gather your materials. Most importantly, being a circular saw. I'm using this 5.5 or OB, but obviously you can use whatever circular saw you want. The second is that you're going to need a piece of wood to act as your track. I'm using this piece of 3 quarter inch pine. The important piece is that you want to make sure that the width of your track is going to be as wide or wider than the base of your circular saw. Next, you're going to need a piece of wood, again, it can be any material you want, that's going to act as a fence for your circular saw to ride against. This will eventually get attached to your track. The next thing you'll need are two pieces of wood of the same height that will elevate the track up to give you space to put material underneath. And lastly, you'll need a base of some sort. I'm using this piece of quarter inch plywood, but you can use whatever material with whatever thickness you have on hand. The length and the width of the jig is going to be dependent on the needs you have. For me, I've been needing my shop to be able to quickly and accurately cut down plywood to primarily be able to build shop cabinets and or other shop related jigs that require plywood, kind of like the shooting board behind me. Therefore, since the standard height of cabinets is somewhere around 36 inches, I decided to cut my base down to a length of 38 inches. This will give me enough room to accommodate for the cuts I will primarily be making, as well as be able to give me more than enough room to make any other cuts for any other shop jigs I might need to make. With that in mind, think about what you need from this jig in your shop and pick the dimensions that are best going to accommodate those needs. Once you have the dimensions of the base decided upon, that's going to determine what the rest of the dimensions for your pieces are going to be. Starting with the track. The length of your track is going to need to be the same size as the length of your base. Or, if you're using the width of your base, it's going to need to be the same size as the width of the base. Next, the support rails are going to determine the depth of cut. Whatever your height is, is going to be however deep of a cut you can make. For me, I'm using 3 quarters inch, which means I can cut up to a maximum of 3 quarters inch. Which, for what I'll be doing, is plenty wide enough. And once you have all these materials cut to the size that you need, we can then begin working on the track itself. First things first, make sure you take the battery out or unplug your circular saw before handling the saw in any way. Once the saw is safe to handle, take a combination square and set it to the width of the base of the saw. Then set the combination square against the flat edge of your track and clamp one end of the fence in place. Then move to the other side of the fence, set your square against the same edge and clamp the other side in place, leaving room to drill a screw on the very end. Then drill a hole, countersink it, and drive home a screw. With the first screw in place, you can then begin working your way down the fence, repeating this whole process of setting the fence to the correct width using your combination square, clamping it in place, drilling a hole, countersinking, and driving home a screw. By doing this, you'll ensure that the fence is parallel to the edge along the entire length of the track. This may not give you a perfect result, but for a quick and dirty jig like this, it'll be more than sufficient. Now, I wanted to ensure that when I made my first cut into the fence, that the saw stayed firmly against the fence during the entire cut. So I attached another fence on the edge of the track that would create a tight channel for the saw to travel through. I originally thought this would be necessary, but since using the jig without the additional fence, I realized that the extra fence isn't necessary and that you can get good results without it. So I'll leave it up to you to decide if you want to attach an additional fence or not. Anyway, once the glue had dried, Clamp the fence down and make your initial cut, ensuring you keep the saw firmly up against the fence. By making the initial cut like this, you'll ensure that the cutting edge is perfectly parallel to the fence. Once that is done, we can focus on attaching the two track supports to the base. For the front of the base, where the boards will be pressed against the support, I made sure to countersink plenty of screws to ensure it wouldn't come loose. Then you can flip the base around and screw on the other support. Since this wouldn't have any pressure being put against it, I didn't feel the need to use many screws, just enough to keep it in place. 
Finally, and the most important part, is attaching the track to the fence supports. It is crucial that you get the fence 90 degrees to the front fence support, as this will determine whether your final cut is square or not. So using a square firmly fixed to the front fence support, slide the track up against the square, and then clamp the track down so it will stay in place while you screw it in place. Once you are sure the track is square to the fence, put one screw in the front, then leaving the clamp in place, move to the back of the track and fix the back in place with a couple screws. At this point, the track should be firmly in place so you can then safely remove the clamp from the front of the track and put in the remaining screw. And the last step is to make the inaugural first cut. Set your saw so that it is just barely cutting into the base, and then like before, make the cut, ensuring that you keep the saw firmly pressed up against the track fence. You should be left with a cut that has gone through both fence supports and just barely into the base. And that's it! Your jig is finished and ready to use. So here's a great example of how this jig will help me in my shop. I need to fit drawer bottoms to this drawer I'm making, and so I can take a little piece of scrap wood, I can get the width that I need, then I can transfer that mark onto the drawer bottom, then I can slide this plywood underneath and line up my mark, and then simply just make the cut. And just like that, with a little bit of setup, I was able to make this perfectly 90 degree cut that lets this drawer bottom slide right into place. And as you can see in some of the shots, I have a lot of drawer bottoms to make, and this jig is helping me immensely to be able to make this process easy, smooth, and relatively painless. So thanks for watching, and I hope this jig will be helpful to you in your shop. And hey, if you use hand planes a lot, then you may like this jig I built for my hand plane.